This is Joseph Drust, and welcome back to another episode of Ask ZBrush. So we had a question sent in from a user asking, what's the best way to apply a mesh pattern to a DynaMesh model using Noisemaker? So here I just have a quick sculpt done inside of ZBrush. And this torso here is a DynaMesh model that has about 1 million polygons and consists of one single polygroup. So now that I have this model at this stage, say I want to go in and apply a mesh detail pattern to say this panel here, this panel here, and then maybe some of the other panels on my model. How would I go about doing that inside of ZBrush? So the process that I normally do is first I will take my DynaMesh model, I will break this model into polygroups, I'll then use ZRemesher to ZRemesh this model to give me a lower resolution version, I'll then unwrap that model to generate UV coordinates. I'll then project the high details back to the Z remeshed model. And then I'll use surface noise with those UV coordinates to apply the patterns where I want it. So to start this process off, we first need to break our torso here into different polygroups. And we want to create these polygroups around the natural seams we've sculpted in. This is going to allow us to have that mesh break up appropriately and look correct on our model. So everywhere we have these seams sculpted in, we want to make sure that this is a different polygrouped area on the surface of our model here. There are quite a few ways to break a model up into polygrouping. I'm going to talk about two. The first one is using the slice brush, and the second one is using masking and edge loop masked border. So here I just have a polysphere, and it's one single polygroup. And I'm going to turn on the polyframes here. And I want to just come through and break this model up into a few polygroups. The first method is using masking and the edge looped masked border. So this process involves applying some masking to our model, so holding control and applying a mask. And then after this mask is generated, we need to navigate over here to the geometry panel, open up the edge loop tab, and click Edge Loop Masked Border. Now after you click this, and then clear your mask, you're going to notice that masked area has a edge loop that's been applied all around the area. And this is giving a nice clean cut to the surface of your model. So if I isolate that polygroup there, you're gonna see and get this nice transition, and it should mimic the masking we just had applied to the surface of our mesh. So that is the first method to come through and mask out different areas on the model and apply new polygrouping to that area. The second method that works really well is using the slice brushes. So if I hold Control and Shift on my keyboard and then navigate over to the brush palette, you'll see there are a few slice brushes here that we can choose from. So as an example, I'm gonna just click on the slice circle brush here. I'm gonna hold Control and Shift to drag this slice out. So you can drag it out like so, hold spacebar to move it around, and when you release, it's going to slice the model and then generate a new polygrouped area there. So now I can isolate that, and you can see I have a nice cut around that polygroup, and I have a new polygrouped area on my mesh. So these are the two approaches that I use to cut a model up into polygroups. So if I navigate back to my torso here, which is one single polygroup, I can come through and start masking these areas out. So say I want to mask this area here. Apply a masking like so. And then I can come through and click on this edge loop masked border. You're going to notice it's going to give me a clean transition now for that polygroup. And now I can just quickly isolate that area on the mesh like so. Now since this is an Ask ZBrush video, I'm going to go to the next version of the model here that has this process already done. So this was using the slice and edge loop masked border options, and I've gone through and applied different polygrouping to the areas of my model here. So I can hold Control and Shift and click on these, and you can kind of see the breakups in which I did. So all these panels have their own polygrouping. All the trim has its own polygrouping. And then these end caps have their own polygrouping as well. So I've gone through now and broken this model up into these different areas. Now after this model is broken up like so, I now need to create a Z-remeshed version of this model, and I'm going to use these polygroupings to establish 
cuts in my mesh. And this is going to give me a clean cut for all these seams. To do this, first, I want to make sure that I duplicate this model here because I'm going to use this version of the model to project the details back onto my Z remeshed version. So I'm going to duplicate that mesh. And now I have a second version of the model here. And now I'm going to navigate to the geometry tab here. I'm going to open up the Z remesher area. So Z remesher is going to take this model and it's going to generate a lighter weight version of the model with reduced topology so I can unwrap it and then use that unwrapped version with the surface noise options. So I'm going to come over here and turn on keep groups. I'm going to keep the smooth group border setting like so, and I'm going to change my target polygon count to something around 30. And then I'm just going to click Z remesher. So after this finishes, you can rotate around your model here, and you'll see that all that polygrouping we applied to the mesh has held. And if I turn on my polyframes here, you can see that the model has drastically reduced polygon count compared to what we had originally. So I'm down to 30,000, which is a more reasonable amount to unwrap uh, compared to the million polygon version. So now that I have the polygrouping established and I have the Z remeshed version of the model, we now can unwrap this model using UV Master. So I'm going to navigate to the top here and go to the UV Master tab here, turn on Polygroups, turn off Symmetry, and click Unwrap. So after this process is finished, you should have quite a few UV islands created. So we can come back up to our Z Plugin tab here, and we're going to click on Flatten. This is going to take our model and flatten it out like so. And now we need to come through and adjust our UVs so they're all going in a vertical or horizontal fashion. So this should keep all those different parts of your model one to one, but right now they're kind of oriented all over the place. So we need to come through and change this orientation so we can make sure that our mesh is all going in the directions we want it to go. Now with this flattened version, you can manipulate these different UV islands and then unflatten to adjust or edit the UVs inside of ZBrush. Now, one option that's really handy is using the transpose options up here along with polygroup masking. So first I'm gonna select the move transpose line here, and then I'm gonna navigate over to brush, and I'm gonna go to auto masking, and I'm gonna turn on mask by polygroups to 100. Now with this option on, if I come through and click on an area that I want to transpose, and then now say switch to rotate, it's only going to rotate that polygroup that I have selected. So I can come through with move and rotate now and reposition these UV islands for my model. I just want to quickly come through and reposition the UVs so they're all going in a similar fashion. Just looking for these different ones that are mirrored and just lining them up. I'm just going through and just manipulating these UV coordinates around the model. Now these are the end caps, so I'm not too concerned about their direction. This is one of the areas in the front. And we're just repositioning these as I go, so just doing some rotations on these, switching to transpose move and moving them. And that polygroup masking is going to allow me to keep all these parts separate in this stage. Just make sure when you rotate, you're using rotate and not transpose move. Move will end up distorting the UVs. So after we're done with that, we need to go back to the Z plugin menu here and click on unflatten. And now those UVs have been applied to the model like so. So now the next step is that now we have our lower res version of our model with UV coordinates on it, we need to project our high resolution data back onto this mesh. So with this model, we first need to divide it up some because right now we do not have enough topology to support all the details we had in our original model. So I'm gonna navigate to the geometry tab here and divide this up a few times. So over a million there, 1.9 million. And now I'm going to make sure I have my original DynaMeshed version turned on. So just clicking the eyeball icon here. 
And with the Z-Remeshed version selected, I'm going to navigate to the Project tab here. I'm going to change my distance to 0.1, and I'm going to click Project All. Now when you click this Project All button, ZBrush is going to look at any visible subtools, and it's going to project those details onto your selected tool. So I just have 0.1 here set, and I have the high-res version turned on, and now I'm going to click Project All. So after that process is completed, you'll see all the sculpting details have been projected back on our model here, and this model has UV coordinates. So now we're all set for using Noisemaker to come through and add these different mesh patterns to our model. So just to double check our UVs, I'm going to scroll here to the Texture Map tab, click this Texture Map here, and I'm going to select Texture 19. Texture 19 has these UV coordinate kind of layout system here. I can then go to the UV tab here, go to Create, and change this repeat to say 2x2. Two two. And you can see that all those squares are in a vertical fashion, so that's going to allow me to apply this mesh texture evenly wherever I want it on the model. So this is good to go. Just turn that texture off. So now the next stage in the process is to apply surface noise. Navigate to the Surface tab here turn on noise. This is going to open up Noise Maker. I'm going to set this option to UV because we have established UVs on the mesh here. And then I'm going to load in our mesh pattern. So I'm going to come here and click on Alpha on and off. And then I'm going to select my mesh pattern here. So it's just an alpha mapped texture. Click open. Next I'm going to flip the graph horizontally. This is going to allow me to get positive strength values to see the effect of my model here. I'm going to set the mix basic noise option down to zero, and then I'm going to change the alpha scale here to adjust the size of my mesh. So you can see I have it like so, and I can change the scale to get this mesh exactly how I want it to be sized. Now after that is done, I'm gonna hit okay. And you should now get a preview of this mesh on the model. Since we set those UVs up, you'll see that the mesh is breaking correctly on all these seam lines. So it's generating a more realistic effect on our model. Now, another thing, we only wanted mesh in certain areas on the model here. So right now, with surface noise, it's being applied everywhere. Well, you can control where the surface noise is being applied by using masking. So if I only want the mesh on this side, and say on this side on the model. So I need to mask everything out except for where I want that mesh to be applied. So first I'm going to isolate polygrouped areas that I don't want to mask. So this panel here, I'm going to hold Control and Shift and click. That will isolate it, and then Control and Shift and click again will hide it. I can hide the other one. And then say maybe I want a mesh back as well. So I'm going to hide those two panels there. So I end up with something like this. Now I want to mask everything else. I'm going to hold Control and drag a mask across everything. I'm just going to mask that area out. And then I'm going to hold Control and Shift and just click off in an empty space. And that's going to return the visibility of the other areas. And now as you can see, the unmasked areas are getting the surface noise and the masked areas are not. If you want to toggle the visibility of the mask, you can go to Masking here and turn off View Mask. And now you can see your model as how it would look with that mesh applied. So now that this mesh is still active, I can go back to the surface modifier here, and I can change the size and scale on this mesh like so. And then return back to my model and see it update across the surface here. Now if you want to apply this as sculptural details, so say you're doing a 3D print, you just need to navigate to the geometry panel here and then just simply click Convert BPR to Geo. This will take your model and divide it up to the necessary resolution to hold that mesh surface. So there we have our model, turn off polygrouping here, with that mesh appearing in those areas. So if you have any other additional questions, related to ZBrush pipelines or processes, please use the hashtag AskZBrush on Twitter. Happy ZBrushing!